Thanks for joining us on Shannon's Club TV, where we look back on significant road and race cars in Australia. In today's episode, we have a rare opportunity for an up-close look at an owner's stunning example of our feature car, so stay tuned for that. We'll also get a market update from the Shannon's auctions team. So let's kick things off with the local Ford range that raised performance, buyer choice and excitement to new heights, the XW Falcon. The facelift that transformed the XT Falcon into its XW successor was one of the Australian automotive industry's most successful. The XW made its debut in July 1969 onto streets proud by Jaguar's extraordinary new XJ6 and where the HT Holden with its new plastic grille and the Valiant Pacer in a palette of vivid hues represented the home market. It was the month of Neil Armstrong's moonwalk. What was so clever about the facelift was that Ford Australia's designers had endowed the Falcon in its first nine years, a car known for its gentle curves, with a new, tougher demeanour. Mark, and I'm talking about the standard car, but nothing prepared us for the GT. Nothing yeah. could have prepared us for the GT. Oh, that was un unbelievable, wasn't it? It hit uh, the market like a sledgehammer. I mean, yeah. you had not only the 351 V8, but you had blackout rally panels, you had thick side stripes, you know, bonnet pins, 12 slot chrome wheels, and of course those iconic Super U badges on the car. I mean, and, and Holden had the HT with the plastic <laughs> grille by comparison. I mean, that yeah. car embodies the confidence of Ford Australia at that time under a couple of you know, known petrol heads in Bill Burke and Al Turner. You know, I just don't think Ford ever recaptured the, the raw power they, and excitement of that time. They, under never, those got, two they never got that particular mojo yeah. back, I don't think, did they? Yeah, and the XWGT to me embodies that, that period. It's incredible. Absolutely. Yeah. Whether you were following one or one was in your mirror, the XW looked very different from any of its predecessors. The same treatment was applied where applicable to the wagon, utility and van variants. The Falcon, even in standard guise with a 3.1 litre 6 and 3 on the tree, looked smart on Ligon Street and might have turned heads even on Abbey Road. The XW model range was enlarged with the return of the Futura with 3.6 litres and all synchro three speeder to fill the almost gaping niche between the Falcon 500 and the Fairmont. Then there was the GS, cleverly themed, in a moment of inspiration almost certainly of Burke's, to deliver the sizzle of the new GT without the 351 sausage. Here was niche marketing before that term had even been coined. In the same month that Ford Australia announced its first GTHO version of the GT came the ZC Fairlane, the only Fairlane with the optional high compression Falcon GT 351 V8, an absolute cracker touring car. Bill Burke, of course, was the genius behind all these developments and he put the Falcon right on trajectory to overtake the Holden. Glory days indeed. Mm. Which means, Mark, it was a hell of an anticlimax in 1969 when the GTHO made its Bathurst debut and got beaten. Mm, yeah, it sure was. But you know, it was only a matter of time until Ford's high performance Falcon won the race. It was specifically designed to win. The XW was the first Falcon to be equipped with the iconic 351 cubic inch V8 which provided the starting point for Australia's greatest muscle car, the immortal GTHO. Launched in August 1969, it was available as a premium performance option on the latest Falcon GT, and was clearly designed with one job in mind, to win the Hardy Ferrado 500 at Mount Panorama Bathurst. Designed under Ford Special Vehicles boss Al Turner, most of the changes were focused on the 5.8 litre V8 to produce more power. That's why the HO letters originally stood for high output, but that changed to handling option before launch to calm a nervous insurance industry. Indeed, there were suspension upgrades along with a lower diff ratio and a front spoiler. At Bathurst, the new HOs shattered qualifying records and set a blistering pace in the race. However, faulty limited slip diffs led to tyre blowouts that ensured the first GTHO did not win in 1969. It was a humiliating loss, which only strengthened Ford's resolve to finish what it started. 
John, you know, no car exemplifies the importance of Bathurst in those days more than the Falcon GDHO. Well, of course, there had been Bathurst specials before. Harry Firth cobbled together in his workshop the Cortina GT500, GT but that's yeah. just that was a toe in the water exercise compared with the dedicated factory effort that went into the GDHO. And it's just incredible. You know, in Harry's days with the Cortina, you were talking about you know, British cars. Here was full strength American V8 muscle and setting up an, an actual a, a division called Ford Special Vehicles just to develop a car to win Bathurst. I mean, that was unprecedented. It was the beginning of the kind of professionalism that, that kind of took over Australian motorsport, wasn't it? Sure it sure was, yeah. 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 yeah, it was a very, very exciting yeah. time. Released in August 1970, the tougher and faster GDHO Phase 2 was visually hard to pick from its predecessor, but there were big changes under the skin aimed at not only achieving higher top speeds at Bathurst, but also toughening up the whole drivetrain and suspension package. The greatest change was replacement of the 351 Windsor V8 with Ford's new big breathing Cleveland version, supplied in US high output specification. The new engine had power to burn, particularly at the upper end of its rev range on the long straights at Mount Panorama, where top speeds in 1970 exceeded 140 mile per hour on Conrod Strait. The faster and tougher Phase 2 gave Ford the Bathurst win it patiently waited a year for, with a dominant 1-2 result in the 1970 race for works drivers Alan Moffat and Bruce McPhee. The GTHO Bathurst legend had begun. You can read many other great road and race stories on the Shannon's Club website. Yeah, my name's Dean, and I've got an XW GT HO Falcon. It was purchased by uh, Grant Broadbent up in Townsville in Queensland. It's the HO of the uh, XW, so it was a, the, uh, some engine modifications which really done for the Bathurst cars. Holly carburetor, uh, different inlet take, manifold, slightly different gears in the gearbox, big tank. Besides uh, giving it a bit of a sort of you know a bit of TLC and cleaning up a little bit, it's pretty much as it is. It's a completely original car. It's had nothing done to it. It's got about 22 or 23,000 miles on it. They say that the XW HOs are probably the nicest car to drive. As a kid, this is a car that I really wanted when I was growing up, and got myself one, so it's a uh, it's a keeper. I'm Shannon's customer. I've been with Shannon's for probably 30 or 35 years. I've got to know a couple of guys in there and uh, they, they deal with me on a, on a personal base, so it's enjoyable. I had a uh, replica XW GT Falcon when I was young. This was the last car to complete my GT sort of collection in the X, uh, XT, XW, XY. Collection of those, those four. I keep most of my cars and I'll, I'll definitely keep this one. Hopefully my kids will you know, take up the interest, which they have already. I suppose just maintaining it for whoever the next owner may be at some stage. I have no plans to sell the car. Well, Shannon's National Auctions Manager Chris Borobon joins us to bring us right up to speed on the XW Falcon. Welcome to the show, uh, mate. John. Welcome, Chris. The XW mm. Falcon, wasn't that just about the cleverest facelift that you could imagine? The front of the car looked different, the back yep. of the car looked different. It was still the same basic car, but mm. that, that was just the beginning of the marketing genius that went into the XW. Good package, yeah, very nice yeah. package. And, uh, you know, today we see, uh, you know, how important that is uh, amongst enthusiasts. It's uh, made a real comeback and some of the, I guess, more desirable variants uh, are now, you know, have increased in price significantly. Well, the GTHO would be... That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I mean, you had the, the, the GT, the GTHO, yep. um, big range of cars. I mean, we had the sedans, we had station wagons, we had utes, we had panel vans, of course, yes. and those beautiful yep. fair lanes. But I guess when we're talking about the pecking order, Falcon GT, GTHO. That's right. Uh, the ZC Fairlane with the vertical stack. And the high headlines. compression. High compression. High compression, compression, motor. High yep, compression right. engines. Only on the ZC. Yeah. Yes. Yep. So, yeah, you know, there's a lot to choose from. What, yeah. What, what, Look, 
talking about pecking order, you'd have to go phase two, GDHO. GDHO, uh, yeah. Phase one, uh, then you're down into the GTs. Uh, Fairmont GS, with the obviously the Very high compression nice. engine again, yeah, um, yeah. and then you're down into again your lower models. But we, we're seeing some of the you know the rarer variants like the Utes as well now with the V8 uh, powered yeah. Utes are, are quite sought after. No, the, the GS option was only available on sedans. That's a very a good point. Yes. It's a very clever thing to do. Mm. But, but the, the point about GS is you know people could option up lower spec cars. So yeah. when you're looking yeah, around the XWs, there's all these really interesting GS combinations because yes. people were able to pick and choose what they wanted. Yeah. Do it on a Falcon. The 500. Yeah, That's exactly. right, yeah. Well, the Fairmont GS for me is probably, you know, I, I really like it. Mm. Uh, it's a great looking car. Uh, I've always loved the GS striping mm. uh, kit on it. And if you had the, the V8 to match, what a great package. Absolutely. Um, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, look, you know, we saw the history of the GTs and, uh, mm. you know, and the HOs. And obviously that's, you know, that was plays a significant part of, of our industry here in Australia. And I think, you know, that's where the desirability factor lays. And a lot of the dealers, of course, tricked up utes as GSs. Oh, there was a lot of that going yeah. on. Yeah. And so that ZC Fairlane is fascinating because, as John mentioned, it had the high compression 351 V8 option. And I think only in that model you could get a four-speed four manual. manual. Now, I think four the take, on the floor. Well, I think, the, I think <laughs> yeah. the take up rate of that was so small that we never saw it again. But that must make a a four-speed manual 351ZC Fairlane, that's a rare quite, car. Quite sort of after. I mean, we've had a couple come through the auction over the years, yeah. and uh, the enthusiasts have been all over it. Um, I'm sure. And, and we've, we've had a couple of very nice original examples mm. and, and sort of hero colours as well. And, uh, and yeah, look, look, it makes for a great family cruiser. You know, take your friends out. Um, great club car. And uh, are the utes highly sought after as much as the sedans and wagons or...? We are seeing a fair, you know, a fair following for the Utes, and uh, especially the ones, you know, slightly rarer options with the V8s yeah. and you know the striping kits, things like that. Yeah. Um, there is a bit of demand for it, and and the wagons. I mean, you, you don't see many around no. at all. So yeah. when you do see one yes. that's got the right options, you know, it's probably one to jump on. Beautiful. Yeah. All right. Thanks for joining us, Chris. No problem, guys. And remember, you can keep up to date with all the latest Shannon's auctions news on the Shannon's Club website. If you'd like a memorable race image of the XW Falcon, check out the huge archive at autopix.com.au. John, reflecting on the XW Falcon, yeah, we've looked at the range, but Ford Australia at that time really were giving hold in a hard time, particularly in the, the luxury area. They really well, had you can it, yeah. see where it really began with the XR, mm. with Bill Burke's genius taking it first in the direction of luxury with a, the with a Fairlane 500, and then in the direction of high performance with the Falcon GT. But when we got to the XW, that whole approach was ratcheted up mm. to quite a degree. Yeah, and it was really sort of a, a changing face of Australia, really, society, because We'd come from those British origins, but there was a very strong American influence starting to come into you know affluent lifestyles, appliances at home, people having. And you think cars. about the Australian manufacturing industry all the way from the one Holden forty eight two fifteen model, mm. and the Holden Special through to the a, a huge range of Fords. Mm. Yeah, it was a magic time for mm. Ford Motor Company. Mm. Well, we hope you've enjoyed reflecting on the exciting XW Falcon range, and we hope you can join us next time for Shannon's Club TV. Bye for now.